princely watches and a series of exceptional automatons were bequeathed to the museum by Maurice Sando. The Teorbo player, created in the late Renaissance, advanced down the banquet table playing its music. When it stopped, the closest guest was challenged to a dare. This silkworm from the 18th century can still slither gracefully, showing off its enameled gold, pearls, rubies, emeralds, and diamonds. At this period, the fashion was for automatons simulating the movement of water. Shards of glass gave the impression of a flowing river and waterfall. A pageant of dance and music was roused each hour, or on demand, in the pendulum clock of this vanity table. From slightly later, this fountain also creates the illusion of a flowing stream accompanied by chiming bells. This elderly brass lady, 21 centimeters high, hobbles shakily on her way as she has for 200 years. Although it is not known who made her, specialists believe her to be of English origin. The museum has nicknamed the old lady the Wicked Fairy Godmother. She is surrounded by birds from the same period with authentic feathers, still able to warble their varied songs just as they did in the days of Napoleon. The singing bird mirror is a chief attraction of the museum. On the top, a golden rose opens to release the singing bird. Flights of fancy were not uncommon. A sophisticated mechanism drives this dandified monkey smoking his cigarette made just before 1900. It might be thought that the advent of quartz technology, electronics, and the swatch would threaten the traditional artisanal methods with extinction. But the abiding appeal of fine watches has secured a future for these ancestral skills. Models of historical watches and automatons are often the source of inspiration for today's artisans. <laughs> 